Six is Man United, actually. 100 million euros, 84 million pounds, 7.8 billion um, uh, Indian rupees. And I did get told that in Korean yen, it's about 500 billion. So United have spent big, big money on Anthony. How are you feeling, Kaz? More Brazilian samba and flair at Old Trafford. I don't mind, man. The Dutch samba boys are here, ready to rock. Ready to take the league by storm in terms of getting us from eighth place to fifth place. <laughs> but other than that, um, yeah, man. I mean, we have overpaid. It is what it is, but am I going to be annoyed by it? No, I'm not. Glazers out always. And also, on top of that, it's just uh, he brings a different element to... Well, it brings a different element to the squad. As in, we ain't had a right winger since... Antonio Sancho. Valencia. No, no, no. Antonio, a, proper, a proper right winger is probably Antonio Valencia. He was a different type of winger. So you could say someone like Luis Nani, maybe, but even back yeah. even back then to Ronaldo potentially. But we ain't had one we've been screaming this out for years and years. We ain't had a proper right winger in forever. So I'm we I'm delighted with the signing, of course, because we don't have a player like it. Except maybe you could say he's a bit similar to too similar to Sancho. Does he automatically go into that starting lineup? Oh, yeah. all day long. Like what? What Ten Hag has done? He's he's taken out Shaw, Maguire, and Alanga out of the starting lineup. Thank mm, you very much. Mm. Do you I'm, think Sancho I'm, goes on the left then? Sorry, go. Do you think Sancho goes on the left then? Because yeah, I believe so. I think he does. I think his best position is on the left. But the best thing is that both of them can play either side as well. So if you wanted to change it around, then you can. I'm looking forward to seeing. First game is going to be against us. Am I wrong? He's not going to make it in time for Leicester. Yeah, Leicester. The, he's landed, just landed in the UK today. Medical's happening. It only takes around two days for that to happen. He'll probably be at it. They may squeeze him through for Thursday. He might be on the bench, but um, he, according to some reports out of Brazil, that is, he is buzzing at the idea of playing Arsenal in his first game. Like this, this kid, when you read about him, this kid's had the bit between his teeth to always be a Prem player. Kind of grew up watching it, loved it, and... Yeah, he wants his, his first game will be against Arsenal, who are we'll get on to later, but top of the league and flying. And I'm a bit like you, Kaz. I'm buzzing about the idea of seeing him. I know he's overpriced, but, you know, Morgan Gibbs wipes 44 million. You know, for far yeah, yeah. it's gone for, like, similar. You actually look at it. Like, Liverpool spent 100 million euros on, listen, Darwin Nunes scored a lot of goals, but was doing it in Portugal. And a lot of people have questioned these touches. You too raw for that amount of money. Will he be able to return it? So there's a lot of players with big question marks against them this year that have gone for big money. The question I've got for the panel is more for our rivals. Do you think he's going to be a hit at 84 million or 100 million euros in the Premier League? Is this good business by Man United? 197 million pounds now spent. Him, Casemiro, uh, Ericsson. Go, Martinez man. and yes. Malasia. Have United done good business? Plus the Brad no. Cup at the back up. Have United done good business? Let me yeah, go. they have. No, I, can I, me, can I, can go, I go? go? No, you can't go, Kaz. It's for rivals. It's a good sign in by his bad business. Yeah, yeah, Gal, you go first. I just want to say, I was on here a couple weeks ago and I was saying to you, Terry and Kaz, just get it done because you guys know you've wanted him. You already have the plan. Managers already work for him and Good job. You got you got your guy. You got what you wanted to do, and you didn't go and get a, 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 a Usman. De, you didn't go and get a, a random signing like a, a Debala or or a Gakpo last minute, or just change your whole direction. You stuck by your guns. You got who you wanted. It doesn't matter how much you paid for him at this moment in time. If he performs, which I think he will, but I think it's going to take him a little bit longer to adjust with the change of the league. Even though he has the same manager, I'm probably saying this whole first year. I, you, realistically, I'm not expecting a lot from him. I'm thinking maybe next year you're going to see the true Anthony. This year you're probably just going to see how every Premier League player comes in the first year and finds it difficult to adjust. He's going to he's going to find it difficult to adjust for the first year. Yeah, and I want to interject on that. I think it's good business. I think you guys have signed some good players. I mean, Casemiro, no one saw that coming. That came out of nowhere. You got him in. He's a quality, quality player. One of the best DMs in the world. Anthony, yes, it's overpriced. It's too early to say if it's going to be a hit. He's young. It's going to take him time to adjust to the Premier League. But really and truly, yeah, he's only 22. He's got a long career ahead of him. So realistically, it should be a hit. And the other guys, I mean, uh, Malassia, whatever his, his name, how we pronounce it, he's come in and looked good straight away. So to be fair, you guys are strengthened in, in key positions. And these guys are coming in and they're going to be key players for you so I think you guys have done good business to be honest uh, considering it's been Glazers out and all of the fuel and everything going on that they've actually done well for you lot. so it's yeah. a bit ironic just to, just to echo what Egal saying as well like 
you've got your man. I mean, this is a man that you guys have wanted. It's like it's clear, it's clear to see it's an Eric Ten Hag signing. So in that regard, I mean, he's got the player that he wants. He's not having to go and, you know, bend over backwards and say, all right, I want Anthony, but let's just go as a gal said, get a Gakpo or get someone else that might fit the profile, but isn't the right player. I mean, you've got the right player and it's great. The question I've got, though, is, is he the player that's going to give the output that Man United necessarily need now? Because we're looking at that striker and that striker is still an area that obviously United can still strengthen in. Now, if you look at the wingers that we've got in the Prem currently, so your, your Salas, your Sons, your Kulisevskis, they're all giving up. The reason why they're doing well is because they're giving us output, but in regards to goals. Now, for me, he seemed like the type of winger, as um, Kaza said on numerous streams before, he's much more creative. He's, he's a much more old school type of winger. So how that works out in terms of what he delivers on the pitch, I mean, that remains to be seen. But on the face of it, yeah, I mean... They got their man, so you can't really complain. You can't really complain. I hear you. I hear you. But he's a he is a different type of wing. The thing is with Salah and Son and all them man there, they're in they're inside forwards. This guy's an inverted winger. There's a difference in yeah. terms of playing styles in terms of these wingers, because then we can say as well, I get I get you though. The striker is the big question. Can you get the 20? You've got creative people around you. Who's gonna get the goals? Bruno Fernandez, potentially Van der Beek if he gets a run of games, potentially. I don't know. Uh, is Martial going to live up to the boots? Is Ronaldo going to be here next time? I, I have no clue. But no, but you know what? The thing is, Man United have been paying over the odds for players for years, even back before uh, Fergie. 30 million, Rio Ferdinand. Uh, you could even go back to Sebastian Veron, overpaying for the people for years and years and years. But it's just weird how we're ruining the market now after there's been other signings. Jack Grealish to notably say... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. You know what? When I said that, I was actually joking. And the thing is, so many people thought I was being serious. I was like, come on, I'm actually serious. taking the piss. No, I was actually yeah. messing about. You can even see it in my responses. Chelsea, uh, I mean, loads of teams... <laughs> it wasn't you, it was us. They have overpaid <laughs> for players. So I was actually messing about. But it's so funny how people... Took Apparently we're ruining the market all the time. Why am I like, when we make a sign? Why are we always ruining the market when there's been other there's been other ludicrous signings Havertz Lukaku to nobody that's on the just Chelsea side by the wow. way wow why why like, I'm, I'm, one of those no, guys no, called no, a Champions no, League winning goal man worth oh, every oh that's that's nice everything. and that's nice and, Mas and Mustafi won a World Cup and what but what's it called um <laughs> long story short it's just uh, I, I, it is what it is it's the, the agenda's gonna run I don't mind it I and mean, yeah it was bad business but a good signing and no it's not bad business it's actually, not bad. Actually, I mean no, the business, whole, the whole, all I can say yeah they should have, what they should have done yeah, is like, okay, we're going to pay over the odds. But then after that, we need to ask for Patrick's skincare routine because that's looking like a million dollars right now too. <laughs> <laughs> now, Patrick, you are, looking, you are looking good, bro. You are looking good. Oh, you are looking you. good. I'm humbled. But, I'm humbled. I just, for me, I look at it a little bit different, right? I'm, I'm, seeing a lot, I'm seeing a lot of comments like this here. Where has it gone? This is that Man United's biggest mistake, not getting Anthony and Martinez at the start. Uh, would have got them both for 80 mil. What, what I would say about this is I find these kind of things ironic. I put out videos sometimes that will give a transfer story from, a from I don't know, Fabrice Hawkins as, 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 a, as a journalist. And people say, until Fab says it, I'm not believing it. But if you listen to what Fabrizio said in the most recent video where he phoned Anthony, Anthony's been pushing for this move since February. And in February, they told Anthony, if they get a sensible bid, they'll let him go. Man United bid 54 million first which is 20 million above his valuation. They then bid around low 60s and then high 60s. They then bid low 70s and high 70s. And in the end went to 84 million. So I don't like defending Manchester United, the, the board and how we and how we do things. But we this wasn't about us dragging our heels. It was about Ajax continuously saying no, 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 no. And the problem that you've got if you're Man United, and this is all about whether the player delivers or not. And I'll get on to that. If you turn around and go, do you know what, Sod it, we're not going above 60 million, we're walking away. And then next summer, Liverpool come in and buy him or Arsenal buy him or Tottenham or Chelsea. For, for it, less than that, 50 million or 60 million or 70 million. And then he kills it and he's amazing. You then look back and go, it would have been worth paying 84 million pounds to make sure that you've got him and your rivals don't. And the thing about the price of a player is that they need to deliver. And it may take a year to settle, but I think he'll do well at Man United. And the reason that I say that is because we're doing, we're kind of doing, we're making mistakes, but we're kind of doing what we do at the beginning of all our new manager reigns. We're giving them what they want. We're allowing him to, to manage the squad the way he wants to. And as soon as he's removed some of the problem players in terms of personality and or quality, and he gave a few of them an opportunity in those first two games, Man United have got much better. Brilliant against Liverpool, I felt, for, for where we were and where Liverpool are and, and the overall night. And I rewatched the Southampton game and, 
first half, we should have been two or three nil up. In the second half, towards the end, we, we did hold on, and there was a couple of good saves from De Gea and a clearance off the line. But when I rewatched it, you saw how resolute we were, how good our shape was, how we actually fought until the end. That hasn't been something you could look at a Man United team and say for 18 months, which has been part of my embarrassment. And I look at that as being driven by the new signings, the players that Ten Hag has put faith in. Some, some of our existing players have then elevated their games. And if Anthony comes in and does half as well as the, the, so far what Malassia and Lissandro Martinez have done, I think he'll be a hit. I think he'll do his job well. And if he's creating opportunities and chances, we do have players. Like Rashford isn't a creator. But if you put balls on a plate to him, he scores. Martial will score if they're having stuff created. These aren't players who will create five to ten chances a season for themselves and score goals. If you're putting it on a plate, they'll do Rashford's goal against Liverpool. It was put on a plate for him. And I think Anthony will help us to do that. And I do believe on, on paper, it's a very good sign in. I'm very excited to see him in a Man United shirt. And do I care that he cost 84 million? I, I, I kind of do. And I don't. Um, there's part of it. You something on that really get dragged over the coals. But at the same time, I believe this player is seriously talented because I trust in the talent ID of Eric Ten Hag. When everyone laughed at 50 million pounds, for Lissandro mm-hmm. Martinez because he's a hobbit. Everyone, everyone laughed at us and said it was a stupid deal. And the last two games, he's put in <laughs> one of the match performances. He's He hasn't lost... Like, I don't care what the stat says that he lost an aerial drill. I've got Y Scout. I can look at every single aerial drill. He's got his head to every cross that's come into that box. Every header. He fights. He can play out from the back. So if Anthony is as good in his position as Lissandro Martinez has been so far, I'm excited. Let me ask you this, Terry. And Kaz. You, Kaz kept saying bad business. Do you think... It's Manchester United's reputation at this point where teams will be like, you bid 50 million, you bid 60 million. That is the original valuation that they're saying that they're putting out there. They'll test your resolve and maybe reject it just to test you guys. You want me to, argue, you want me to go on that first? I, why is bad business? Because we could, have gone, we could have done these deals two months ago. No, That's no, why. You, didn't, you didn't hear my point. Is it Manchester United's right. reputation in the market that needs to change? in order? Or, oh, it's oh yeah, yeah, business. you can't. The thing is, the thing is, right? We've definitely overspent in this window, but the thing is, is how do you recover from that? Because that can't run next window. It really can't. And maybe we've got dipping. I guarantee they're going to say next season if they're still in charge of us that we we dipped into the transfer summer window to get some players from last year. That's probably what's going to be the excuse if we don't get nobody. I can just see it happening. It's written already. I think it's part of their reputation, but then also the predicament we find ourselves in. So we needed new players, and you can be strapped up in that circumstance, because we had to buy new players. We couldn't get away with uh, missing out on, you know, last year City felt like Kane was overpriced at his age and whatever else was going on. City didn't win in a desperate need for him because they still won the league without him. It gives you power in negotiation. Everybody knows we need players because we're absolutely dying on our ass. It's the worst. We This was the worst performing Manchester United team since World War II. You can't sit down in a meeting and hide that fact. Do, Do you get where I'm coming from? So, you're in de- when you're desperate for something, it's very easy to exploit people for money because it's either take it at this price or not at all. You've seen what they you've seen. <laughs> Do you guys watch that um, documentary on Woodstock on uh, um, Netflix? I think you watch oh, it about yeah. the festival. It is crazy. But there's a moment where <laughs> loads of water and food run out. So the places that were selling it put their prices up. And by the way, this was like in the late nineties, early noughties, they put their prices of water up from like $2 a bottle to like $15 because everyone was desperate for it and would pay it. And that's what's happening to Manchester. There's a reason for this story. That's what people are doing to Man United. We know you need new defenders. We know you need new midfielders. We know you need new wingers. That's the price or you don't get them. How it will, will, will how we'll get players slightly cheaper is by actually being better at football on the, on the football pitch. It's a little bit chicken and egg really, but it's a great, it's a great question. So, um, there we go. Yeah, no, I, I think, I think.